Hello, it's me. Time to go over Friday's lesson. I know some of you weren't a big fan of graphing to find the solution to a system of equations because we need a little refresher course on just graphing. So let's take a look and see what we've got. I've got two equations right here. I've got y equals x minus 8 and y equals a negative 2x plus 1. So the easiest way to graph is if you can get it in slope-intercept form. If you remember, I taught you y equals mx plus b. But there is no m. Now we know if there's not an m, we just assume it to be a 1. And we can also say keep, change, change, which puts it in the slope-intercept formula. y equals mx plus B. So my M is a 1. And I always want to put that over 1 because I need rise over run. Rise over run. So I need a numerator and a denominator. So M equals 1 over 1 and B equals a negative 8. Y equals M X plus B. There's my B. So now to graph, I'm going down to find my b, which is a negative 8. The y-intercept is the b. The y-intercept is where you are intersecting or crossing the y-axis. So let's go down on the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's a negative 8. That's why we're going down. And my slope is 1 over 1. So I'm going to go up 1 to the right 1 because it's all positive. Up is positive to the right is positive. Down is negative to the left is negative. So I'm going to go up 1 over 1, 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 up 1 over 1. Okay? So you can do that as many times as you think you need if you're a very neat um, Grapher, you may not need to put in as many points. If you're not so neat, eh, you might need to either neaten up or put in a lot more points to help you find the point of intersection. All right, let's look at our second equation. Our second equation is y equals a negative 2x plus 1. Now that is in perfect sloped intercept form. y equals mx plus B. So my M is a negative 2, and remember I want that over 1 because I want rise over run, and my B, Y equals MX plus B is 1. My Y intercept, my B is where you are going to cross the Y axis. And that is 1, so I go up 1 because it is a positive 1. Now, my slope is a negative 2, which means I go um, either to the, to the left and up or to the right and down. I need to, at some point, incorporate a negative. It can either be in the numerator or the denominator. Well, I'm going to want to put it in the denominator. Okay, because I want to be able to go down. You can see I, I need to go down to reach my line. So I can either go to the left and up or to the right and down to occupy or use that negative. So I'm going to go down to 1, 2, and to the right. Down 2 and to the right. Down 2 and to the right. And looky, looky what I found. I found my point of intersection. What is my point of intersection? It is the point that my first line and my second line cross. And it is right there. So let's find out what that is. All right. On the x-axis, I have come over 1, 2, 3 to the right. So that's a positive 3. On the y-axis, I have come down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
down, that would be a negative. So that is my point of intersection, 3, negative 5. Now, if you recall, we were instructed to do check steps. So, let me get my original equation. Here it is, right here. Y equals X minus 8. That was the original. My second one was y equals a negative 2x plus 1. Now, we said that our point is 3, negative 5, the point where they both cross, the point both of these equations are using. So, I am going to plug in for y a negative 5 for y equals a 3 for my x minus 8. A negative 5 equals 3 minus 8 is a negative 5. Negative 5 equals negative 5. And check. We'll do the same thing over here. We're going to plug in for y. We're going to plug in our negative 5 equals a negative 2 times my x, which is 3, plus 1. Okay? I am plugging in my point of intersection into my second equation. I get a negative 5 equals a negative 2 times 3 is a negative 6 plus 1. Negative 5 equals a negative 6 plus 1 is a negative 5. And check. I now know that the solution for my system of equations is 3, negative 5. Because both of my equations, or my system, to have a system just means a group. You have to have two, at least two or three sometimes. You could have more, but usually it's just two or three. We'll only be doing two. So a system of equations is my group of equations, and what point do they share? That is the point of intersection. Very good. All right. Let's look at our next one. All righty. Now, I, I hope you've copied that graph paper or made your own graph or print real neat because this is hard to do. It's hard to find the point of intersection if you kind of have crooked lines and kind of sloppy. All right. So here's our second equation, a negative 3x plus y equals 8, and x plus y equals a negative 2. These are not in slope-intercept form, but it's not going to be hard to put them in slope-intercept form, so that's what I'm going to choose to do. To put them in slope-intercept form means I simply need them to be y equals mx plus b. y is already by itself. All I have to do is to get the x on that side. So remember, I can do anything to one side as long as I do it to the other. So if I add 3x to this side and I add 3x to this side, you can see these will cancel, just leaving me with y equals 3x plus 8. y equals mx plus b. Golden. Alright? So my m is 3, and again I want it to be 3 over 1, because I need rise over run, and my b is 8. Is this all sounding vaguely familiar? Okay. All right, now my b, my b is my y-intercept, or where it is intersecting the y-axis, and that's a positive, so let's go up um, a positive 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There we go. Now, technically, my rise over run is positive. Up 1, 2, 3 over 1, but oh dear, it's totally taking me off the graph. So, we learned that a positive divided by a positive is a positive, but we also know that a negative divided by a negative is also a positive. So I can make those both be negative, because a negative 3 divided by a negative 1 is a positive. So I can do it that way, and it brings it back down onto the graph for me. So I'm going to need to go down and to the left. So I'm kind of, 
coming down one, two, three, over one, down one, two, three, over one, down one, two, three, over one, down one, two, three, over, oops, miscounted here, one, two, three, over one. All right. Take, it's best to use a ruler that helped keep your lines straight. You know how I was when I would draw on the smart board. My line wouldn't always be the straightest. All right. Now, let's look at our second equation. A negative x plus y equals 2. And again, that's going to be really easy to turn into slope-intercept form by moving the x to the other side. I can do anything to one side as long as I do it to the other. So I'm going to add x to this side, add x to this side. I get y equals x plus 2. Now remember, we want slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus 2. I don't have an m, so I can assume it is a 1. So my slope is 1 over 1, because I need rise over run, so I need something in the denominator, and my b is 2. y equals mx plus b. My y-intercept, or my b, is where the line is going to cross the y-axis. And I can go up one and over one, but if you see if I continue to go up and over, I'm going to kind of get away from the line I want to intersect with, which is this one. So again, I can make these both negative, because a negative over a negative is the same as a positive. So I can go down one and to the left instead. Down is negative, to the left is negative. Down is negative, to the left. Looky, looky, what I found. I'm always happy when I find it when I'm plotting points because it's easier than trying to draw straight lines. Here's my point. Let's see where we ended up. We came over one, two, three to the left. All right? So that's a negative three. And we came down one, so that's a negative one. And that is our point of intersection, which is the solution to our system or to group, group of two equations. So our system of equations, the solution is a negative three, negative one. Now, like I told you, we always have to check our answers. So you can do this right on your note, in your notebook there, okay? So, go back to my original equation, which was a negative 3x plus y equals 8. And my other one was a negative x plus y equals 2. Here's my answer right here. Okay. I'm going to plug in a negative 3 for x. And I'm going to plug in a negative 1 for y equals 8. Well, I know that a negative times a negative, let me tilt it up here so you can see, a negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9, plus a negative 1 equals 8. 9 plus a negative 1 is 8. 8 equals 8. Check. Check. Okay. Likewise, I'll do the same thing over here. All right. I'm going to plug in a negative 3 for x. Now, there's already a negative out there, so you've got to leave that in there. You've got to leave that negative there, and then plug in a negative 3 for x. See, that's a negative. That's a negative. They both have to stay in play. Plus a negative 1 for y equals 2. So a negative right there. Negative 3 plus a negative 1 equals 2. Minus a negative is a positive 3 plus a negative 1 equals 2. 3 plus a negative 1 is 2 equals 2. That is a true statement. So my system 
of equations has a solution of negative 3, negative 1, and I did the check steps just to make sure that made it a true statement. So, that is good to go. Now here's our last one. I have x plus 3y equals a negative 15, and I have y equals 7. Now, I told you I like slope intercept. I do, but you don't always have to use it. If you feel that nah, this is not the most conducive um, technique to use for this, because I have 3y, and I'd have to divide both sides by 3, you can do that, absolutely. And personally, that's what I would do, but I just want to show you there are other options. I can make a table for x and y and just start plugging in values. Now you have to be kind of clever to make sure you're plugging in the right values so that you don't come up with fractions. So since I have a 3 attached to my y or a coefficient of 3 with my y, I'm going to work with multiples of 3. So for x I'm going to put in 0, 3, 6. All right, so I put in a 0 for 3. 0 plus 3y equals a negative 15. So 0 plus 3y equals a negative 15. 0 plus 3y is 3y equals a negative 15. Divide both sides by 3. y equals a negative 5. There we go. There's one point. I think you're going to see real quick why I like slope-intercept better, because I don't feel like I have to do as much work. Now I have to plug in my next point. I have to plug in the 3. So I'm plugging in a 3 for x plus 3y equals a negative 15. I subtract 3 from both sides, because remember, you can do anything to one side as long as you do it to the other side. I get 3y equals a negative 18, divide both sides by 3, I get y equals a negative 6, there we go, and I will plug in another point. I'm going to plug in 6 this time, 6 in for my x, so I get 6 plus 3y equals a negative 15, subtract 6 from both sides, I get 3y equals a negative 21, divide both sides by 3, I get y equals a negative 7. There, I've got three points, now I can graph them. Alright, my first one is 0 on the x, a negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the y. My next points are 3, negative 6. So 1, 2, 3 on the x, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the y. And 6 on the x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And negative 7 on the y. I'm working at a funky angle. Sorry, i got to turn it real quick. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I'm working at a funky angle um, so that the camera can see it. Thank you for letting me turn my paper. And I will draw my line. Okay? My next equation is y equals a negative 7. Now, if you remember, I talked to you about this. I told you that when you have y equals negative 7, it doesn't matter what you put in for x. y is always going to be negative 7. So, I can put in, let me put in, let me put in the three numbers I used for x over here. I can put in 0, 3, 6, Oh, I think before we even graph, I think we've already kind of found what our answer is going to be. But it does say we're doing this by graphing. So, I will say, come down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it really, really doesn't matter what point I put in for x.
y is always going to be negative 7. There's my point of intersection, or the point at which the first line and the second line cross, or the point that they share. And we've already figured out that the answer is going to be 6, negative 7 is my solution for this system of equations. My system of equations is this equation and this equation. So, we're good to go. As always, I need to do a check step. So let me get my paper here for my check step. Put in my two original equations. X plus 3Y equals a negative 15 and y equals a negative 7. All right, just checking the camera to make sure we can still see. I put in a 6 for x plus 3 times 7, which is my y, equals a negative 15. 6 plus 3 times negative 7 is a negative 21 equals a negative 15. 6 plus a negative 21 is a negative 15 equals a negative 15. Check. All right. My other equation, you're like, well, where do you put the x? There isn't an x, so we don't have to put one in. I simply substitute in the answer that I have for y. And it says y is a negative 7 equals a negative 7. Simple check step check. So I know that the answer to this system of equations or these two equations, which I say is my system, is 6, negative 7. That's my solution because that is the point of intersection for both of my equations or my system of equations, okay? Alrighty, I hope this helps. We're going to do the same exact homework as you did um, last night or Friday because I know it was very, very hard. If you already did it, you get a bonus point, all right? So you'll do it today. You should be able to do that now. Graphing should be a little clearer. If it's still not, please call me, all right? All right, if it's still not, Hello. If it's still not, please call me, okay? All right. Take care, guys.